Hey guys, Nathan Brendan Masters, preamble time. Uh, just so you will know, this video is not for professionals. Uh, when I first uploaded this video, this was a video that got a lot of heat. And for every person that said, oh my God, thank you, you saved my, my, my project, there was like 10 other professional colors who were like, dude, you're an idiot, get out of here. This was not a video to show people how to do professional color correction. I didn't know anything about color correction. This is actually the video that got me into LUTs and color correcting and stuff like that because up until then, I hadn't done it. I mean, just to be real with you, I had done nothing of a sort. The first time I actually did a lot of color correction, a lot of, you know, playing around with the image was this film. So this was something I did because I was in a pinch. This footage was so overexposed, it was unusable. So when you see that train footage that everybody thinks is, oh, that's so cool. And I talk about that in, 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 in this video, in this uh, video, that wasn't cause man, we were just on point with that look. That was something I kind of had to do. So I, I kind of fixed it up to do the, to make it look the best I could. And I just lucked out. I was shooting this on a Sony NEX F3. So there was no S log or any of that stuff. You, you're just shooting what you're shooting. And even if it was there, I wouldn't have known what to do with it because back in the day, I just didn't color correct. It was white balance, exposure, and focus. Those are my three things. Once I got that right, whatever the camera was set on out of the box, that's the profile I shot in. And actually, I'm, I'll correct something. I did do a little bit of color, not color correction, color grading in the perfect letter. I did a little bit there. That was about it. So if you're a professional colorist or you're someone that does this kind of stuff for a living and this video bothers you, this video is not for you. This video is for people like myself at the time who were amateurs. So this was an amateur trying to help other amateurs out with what he had learned at the time. So if you're really looking for something with some in-depth, uh, some kind of in-depth tutorial about color grading, color correction, things of that nature, this is not that video. This is a very quick how to save your footage if you get in a pinch kind of video. And again, really for amateurs. So let's get into it. If you've seen my film Ambient Evil, you know that a lot of it was shot in real time and a lot of it takes place outside and on the train in various different locations on the go. If you haven't seen it, go over to my vlogging channel. I'll put a link in the description and check out the film over there and uh, see what I'm talking about. Now, one of the things in that film, uh, whether people liked it, whether they didn't like it, the one thing that people always say is the scene on the train, the, the, sh the stuff on the train is the stuff that really uh, either was really gripping or that they really liked some of the best footage uh, in the film. What a lot of people don't know is when I actually shot that, that was horribly overexposed. One of the things when you're working with uh, cameras, when you're working with things like the uh, camera, the Sony's or even some of the DSLRs, what you get in the screen is not always what you're going to see in post. And a lot depends on how you look at the screen. Uh, a lot depends on because, you know, I had to do this. At while moving so I had to handle focus as well as handle uh, ISO and things like that all while recording and the thing about it is moving from one location to another where one location might be a little bit darker another location could be a little bit brighter but just bright enough to be overexposed and that's what happened here uh, on the train tracks here on the train tracks and on the train itself the lighting is very bright, which is a good thing. It's good to have bright lights on a train and on the tracks. But we were working with a 50 millimeter lens at 1.8. Now, keep in mind, we don't because these lenses were uh, these lenses were adapted to fit the Sony Next. They don't have the ability in their automatic lenses, so. Uh, you know, or they're not automatic lenses, but you're supposed to change the 
you know, the uh, f-stops and things via the camera, which we can't do. So the 1.8 lens is always open to 1.8. No matter what, it's always open to 1.8. And to do anything, you have to change the shutter, the shutter speed. So we didn't want to do too much, uh, too much of that while we were actually shooting, especially considering the fact that I was uh, mainly handling focus. As much as people love those scenes, as beautiful as people think those scenes were, this is what they looked like originally. Yep, this this is the original scene right here. Horribly, horribly overexposed. Now, one of the things that people say uh, often is that it's better to underexpose than overexpose. And that's true because if you underexpose, uh, you know, something that has a stop underexposed can be brought up in post. When it's overexposed, it loses some information. So you're going to actually have to go in here and uh, get the computer, you know, in post to get the computer to bring that information back. And a lot of that, I'm assuming, is going to be interpolated and things of that nature. But we can still work with it, okay? So uh, let, me be, uh, let me be clear about this. I am not saying that it's okay to just randomly go out and shoot. However, you should always try to try your best to get exposure and uh, get things right in camera. But one of the things that uh, this and this isn't the only thing I had to use this on. I also had to use this on the scenes in the bathroom. The majority of bathrooms are usually painted white and they have bright lights in there and the light reflects off of everything which is one of the reasons like if you have uh, bright white walls people tend to turn their lights toward the wall and let the light bounce back that's something that they do in both photography and filmmaking so if you're in a place that has all white walls like a bathroom uh that's what's going to happen so uh real quick let's get into this this is not something that's going to take a ton of time uh we're going to go uh, i'm going to hit command four and that's going to bring up the inspector. And what we're going to do is actually go down here. All right. We're going to click on this. And we're going to get our effects and things. Now, in, in Final Cut Pro X, they've made the color correction as part of the effects palette now. So what you're going to do is take this and drop it on here. Now... Uh, for better or worse, this is how you do it now. I don't really know why they made it that way, but, you know, this is what it is. So, hey guys, Future Nathan here. You don't have to do this in Final Cut anymore. This was just one iteration of Final Cut, and I don't even know why this was ever even a thing. You can still do it this way, but there is a color board setting, and it's that little triangle. Just click on your clip, and then click on the triangle, and your color board pops up. So, back to the video. You're going to click on that to bring the color, the little arrow here. Let me go back just so you can see where I clicked on. I clicked on the little arrow right here, little color arrow. And it's going to go here to the color board. Okay, now, we got color, saturation, and exposure. We're going to hit exposure. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to bring this down just a little bit until you start seeing the color come back and what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring the view the view down just a little bit so you guys can see it as it's happening uh, and actually let me go get on uh, I'm going to click on something okay right here this is a good one so you're going to bring this down until you actually see uh, color and information start coming back and remember this is the one in the middle this is your midtones you're bringing that down okay see the further I bring that down the darker it gets and you can actually see the outline of her face at first her face was blending in like that because it was uh, overexposed like that now you can actually see the outline of her face and what you're going to do bring this one down a little bit just a little bit now right about there this one you're going to do as well so your highlights and what you see now we actually have something that we can easily work with 
So this I might bring back up a little bit. See what that gives me. No, I'm going to go ahead and bring that down too. Mid-tones. Might bring the mid-tones down a little bit more. Okay. And you can just do this until you get it where you want it. Now I'm going to keep this. I might bring this up a little more right here. And so there you go. You've brought your... Uh, your footage back basically you brought your image back so uh, you have this here now what I'm going to do is actually take out some of the saturation okay a little bit of that about right there now let's bring that back up and we'll take that there okay so you're bringing you're taking out saturation and the reason we're going to do that is because what we're going to do next is go down here. First, I'm going to go back here. And uh, what we're going to go do is go to the LUT utility right here. And I'm going to put a LUT on here. Now, this already has a lot of blue in it. But I want to get uh, uh, a kind of filmic, more of a film stock kind of look so I'm going to add that LUT right there and I'm going to actually bring it down a little bit bring it down to like right about here all right so now I'm going to actually go back into my color board go back into my exposure and I'm going to deal with it with the LUT on there so we got this bring that down again a little bit more bring that down to right about there that's your highlight. Uh, we're going to bring that down. Now we're going to go into the color. And uh, let's see. Put it. Bring it down. Oh, there we go. There we go. You see the red kind of. You see the uh, kind of brown coming back into her hair. Right there is all blue. Bring it down, down, down. Uh, see, I, I have that negative. Uh, 22 over there so we're gonna bring it down there and you get the brown back into her hair and let's see we're working with the shadows now uh, that's too much I'm going to keep it right there at 11 you see your numbers over here so you can kind of remember where you were at now uh, if you have some more footage and uh, I'm just gonna grab this uh, this clip let's see because this is uh, this is over uh, overexposed as well you have this right what you can do is I'm gonna click on this this clip right here I'm going to hit command C Okay, that's your command C, that's copy. And here I'm going to hit shift command B and I'm going to bring this up. What this will do is paste attributes. We're going to paste the color in the applied LUT. So it's effects, color, and apply LUT. We're going to paste that from one clip to this other clip here. And now that has the same effect on it as the other one. Now, when we get into this clip, you can see uh, outside here, this is a little bit much. So what you may want to do is right before they get to, well, because that's going to actually lead into the other scene. But let's just stay here. What you can do right there, we can go Command-B which is the blade that will separate it and this clip alone we'll go back into the exposure and we're going to bring it up just a bit right there just a bit bring this one up just a bit as well as a matter of fact let's bring that up that's your shadows and we're going to bring the mid-tones uh, back down a little bit so there you have it that scene has been saved 
from uh, from uh, basically being unusable to actually being uh, what you saw in the film where the scene was actually uh, something that everybody loved. They just thought that that scene also that scene not only uh, was some of the most compelling stuff, but was also uh, some of the most uh, beautiful scene uh, scenes or one of the most beautiful scenes in the mu in the movie. So, all right, guys, Nathan Brandon Masters, action filmmaking. You guys, take it easy and keep making those movies. Asta.